Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a an all-round piano exercise to improve your hand coordination, to improve your scale knowledge, music theory knowledge, um interval knowledge, technique, timing, pretty much everything which a pianist needs to do. And this is going to be on some very modern pop sounding music, something you'll find in maybe Coldplay songs or Chainsmokers songs, something you saw at the introduction performance which you heard. And that's what you're going to play at the end of the video. So make sure you get your pianos out or your keyboards out and play along with me throughout this lesson. Watch till the very end and get a book out as well. And to supplement this lesson, there are handwritten notes waiting for you on our Patreon page. Do consider heading over and supporting our channel there. You'll also get uh, tutorials. <clears throat> You'll also get supplementary notes, staff notation, MIDI tracks, backing tracks from even the past lessons which we've done over the past four or five years or so. So head over to Patreon if possible. And if you haven't already, there is a subscribe button somewhere. Do consider hitting it and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Or maybe you'd like to turn it on uh, after the video, which is also cool. For this lesson, we are going to take a scale. I'm going to pick B flat major, a nice scale. It has two flats. <laughs> namely B flat and E flat. So this is your B flat major scale. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, B flat, A, G, F, E flat, D, C, B flat. Okay, so the exercise is built around scale degrees. So I'm going to first explain the scale degrees of the right hand and then the scale degrees of the left hand. So right hand will play G, a, B flat, F. In bar number one, for a start, you could use these fingers, index, middle, ring, thumb. Okay. Second bar, you would do G, A, B flat, D. So G, A, B flat, F, G, A, B flat, D. Repeat. G, A. Play along with me. F, G, A, B flat, D again. G very slowly. A, B flat, F, G, A, B flat, D. Now, while you do this, the left hand has to follow the right hand or support the right hand. And what better than to work on intervals, intervals which sound great together. And in this entire lesson, I'm going to focus our study to two intervals which will stand the test of time. These are the go-to intervals as you're starting playing the piano for sure. These are your thirds and your fifths. They are melody building intervals. They are chord building intervals. They, pretty, they are your go-tos. So to build the thirds and the fifths, you can just see the chart I have for you. In the first row, I've written the B flat major scale in a line. In the second row, I've written the thirds. In the third row, I've written the fifths. But in order to form these thirds and the fifths, I would encourage you to first draw the scale in a neat round circle. So B flat major in a neat round circle, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. You could also draw it in a worm-like structure, which is the visual you get when you play it on the piano. Black note, white note, white note, black note, white note, white note, white note, black note. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. So the worm and the circle will help. And after you've done that, it's very easy to find a third, especially in a circular manner. So what is a third from B flat? You look at B flat, skip one and the next one is the third. See, very important to draw it in a circle and then do it. I wouldn't mind if you pause the video and then do it with me. So B flat, skip one, skip the C and then whack or play the D or write the D. So that's your third. Also what we call as a diatonic third. Diatonic means derived from the scale or from the scale. So this is not, these. this is a major third, but that's not what we are curious about right now. These are diatonic thirds, meaning which they come from the scale of B flat major. So B flat's third is D, B flat to the D, skip one, play the next, then 
C is third diatonically will be E flat look at the circle it can be of great help then D is third is F E flat third is G F third is A G third is B flat A third is C and then of course you can repeat the B flat with its D one more time let's do that B flat to D C to E flat D to F E flat to G F to A G to B flat A to C B flat to D now this is the first type type of interval i want you to figure out and the next interval would be the fifth interval so fifths the circle of fifths can be of great help you can watch some of my circle of fifths videos we'll put a few in the description that will be helpful otherwise you can just use the scale circle b flat c d e flat f just count your way up the scale circle and prepare your list of fifths b flat to f C to G D to A E flat to B flat these are all by the way these are all perfect fifths at least so far B flat to F C to G D to A E flat to B flat F to C G to D This is where you get an anomaly you get A to E flat it's not the fifth It's not the perfect fifth because there's no E in the B flat major scale. Instead, there is a E flat, so that makes it a diminished fifth, or also known as a tritone. A to E flat. Let's do that again. Just the fifths: B flat, F, C, G, D, A, E flat, B flat, F, C, G, D, A, E flat, B flat, F. You could even go descending. That's a nice exercise. But also do one at a time. You could even do the thirds that way. Now the actual exercise I have for you will. hand pick or pluck out a few notes chosen from the scale but i wanted to tell you the essential theory so then we just get get on to playing so from now on you just follow me the notes i have picked for this lesson again in the right hand just to recap g a b flat f g we've already done this a b flat d now in the left hand you need to ask yourself a question what note shall i play in my left hand in the bass register such that its third is g or its third is a or its third is b flat so that's where you need to look at the rows of thirds and fifths which we've populated you'll realize that e flat third happens to be g okay so my treble clef was playing g its third is what e flat played in the bass clef with the left hand and just to reinforce it you could play it with octaves pinkies and thumbs would be used and this exercise will sound beautiful on every register of the piano every single register will work so same story you take a in the treble clef and you ask yourself what is its third or what is its lower third or what what's third is a so you you look at the chart and you'll uh, clearly look at it and say f that's your second th uh, pack of thirds you could also go down two steps in the scale in the scale circle so b flat down two would be g then d down two would be d So let's look at the first bar G with E flat in the bass A with F in the bass B flat with G in the bass and then F with D in the bass and then G with E flat in the bass A with F in the bass B flat with G in the bass and then you do D you you jump up and you play B flat there Let's try and look at the fingering If you do it without octaves, it's 
do it slower. Start with your ring finger on E flat. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Climbing. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. So, the starting finger would be index in the right and ring in the left. That could work. E flat. F. So to play that B flat, you can just slide it with your thumb and move your hand slightly inside, without curving it or bending it too much. Ring. Again, slowly. Again. Second bar. Okay, so now let's try try and build some variations to this exercise. First off, you can play both with octaves. You can play the whole right right hand and left hand with octaves. Then there are no fingering issues. You just go pinky and thumb in the left hand, thumb and pinky in the right hand. Uh, I think this sounds quite musical already, but let's take this to town. Before we start embellishing, adding, and moving a lot of things in our on our hands, I'd like to introduce you to a few simple hand ratios. Hand ratios are nothing but hand ratios. So left hand versus right hand, or left hand is to right hand. The simplest hand ratio would be one is to four, where you start. Both hands together, one, two, three, four. But one is to four, meaning right hand goes four times faster than the left hand. One, two, three, four, one. So you start together, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. This is how I like to count my ratios. Left hand on the chest, right hand on the leg. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Let's try now execute that on the piano. We'll do single fingers. There we go. It's four in the right hand and one in the left hand. Can play it lower if you wish. Don't lift the left hand. Hold it for the entire duration. You don't want to lift it like that. It'll sound bad. So I understand there are sustained pedals on pianos, but try to practice it with your fingers actually down. That's one is to four. What's the opposite of one is to four? Four is to one. So left hand goes faster than the right hand. Let's try and execute four is to one. This is all notated for you. You could download or get yourself a copy of the notes. Four is to one. do stuff on 4x4. Four four. Let's do a waltz or a 3x4. So good waltz hand rhythms would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I would call this 1 is to 3. 1, 2, 3, left, 2, 3. Left and right are together at the 1, but the right goes faster. 1, 2, 3. Similarly, 
What's this? 3 is to 1. 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Let's try this with our piano exercise now. So, that's 3 is to 1. 1 is to 3. worry about fingering too much focus on the control and actually playing it to sound the way it should sound maybe the other three is to one Let's cap off the hand ratios by introducing you to 2 is to 4, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So your left hand hits twice, minims, and your right hand hits four times, crotchets or quarter notes. How will that sound? Slightly tricky, you need to practice. Let's try 4 is to 2. Maybe octaves in both hands. Maybe, maybe make the right hand higher. Sounds good either ways. Or make both the hands higher. Or both the hands lower. Four is to two. So we have been able to practice this exercise with two, with a third interval, left hand and the right hand are thirds with respect to each other and we have done them in a bunch of hand ratios. 1 is to 4, 4 is to 1, 1 is to 3, 3 is to 1, 2 is to 4 and 4 is to 2. Now let's try and stack up some more intervals to make it a lot more, you know, professional sounding. So first off I'd like to stack something in the left hand then we'll go to the right hand. So in the left hand what are you playing again if we isolate it? E flat, F, G, D, E flat, F, G, B flat. And if you refer to our fifth and thirds uh, chart, you'll real. Now I want you to play fifths in for each note of the left hand. So E flat's fifth would be B flat. F's fifth would be C. G's fifth would be D. D's fifth would be A. E f E flat's fifth again would be B flat. F to C. G to D and then you can do B flat to F or lower B flat to F. Let's do that again. E flat to B flat, F C, G D, D A, then E flat to F, B flat, F to C, G to D, B flat to F. Let the right hand play the same thing and let's see how we go. First of all, semi briefs, whole notes. Let's try a few ratios now with this. Maybe 1 is to 3. Octave the right hand maybe. Maybe 3 is to 1. 
you get the idea those ratios we learned earlier so what has happened we have stacked up the left hand to play fifths let's not forget the right hand the right hand can also stack so with our g why not we stack up another fifth so g is fifth what is the right hand playing again g a b flat f so g to d it's fifth not a to e be careful it's a to e flat because of that tritone thing which we wrote earlier b flat to f and then f to d f to c sorry g d a to e flat b flat to f and then d to a so together and then so you form a very sophisticated sound by playing the fifth here and then a different fifth there in this case this is a major seventh chord and then that's a dominant seventh chord f7 if you will that's a minor seventh chord and then another minor seventh chord back to major seventh e flat major seventh f7 g minor 7 end with b flat major 7 so these are proper chords let's try that with a with a ratio 1 is to 4 put in some dynamics again one is to four or maybe you don't have to play it always with ratios you can even play them together you know sounds nice just like this and come back or maybe you can kind of uh, cluster it play it one by one and you decide your pattern right now i'm just doing one by one just cascading it from the left to the right again deep down there's a great exercise to learn your fifths and sound quite musical while doing so define your own pattern if you wish or just hold it and sing something get the idea i hope so two fifths happening one in the left and the other one stacked in the right to make it a bit more interesting or just to add another flavor instead of playing a fifth in the right you can if you wish you can add a third in the right however the third in the right will then copy the fifth of the left but if you like this sound it's a more simpler sound but a nice modern pop sound so thirds in the right hand fifths in the left hand so fifths thirds so put that together it'll be nice if you put a pattern to it Fifths. I kind of like fifths more. 
because it gives you that extra four it gives you four notes in total right or a more simpler pop sound If you're not comfortable with these rhythm patterns, don't worry. Just go back to the hand ratios. The hand ratios should be more than sufficient, really. So moving on, this entire exercise was practiced on the G minor scale or the B flat major scale. We wrote it down very meticulously. We figured out the degrees. We have a chart with thirds and fifths. So why not use this to help us practice our piano? on multiple scales so you could write down a great way to to transpose and to plan or prepare before you transpose would be you write down everything you write down b flat major b flat c d e flat f g a and then you write under that you write 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then under that you write down the new scale which will then be superimposed over this exercise so let's say you do it on g major right so g major will be 1 is g 2 is a 3 is b 4 is c and so on so the exercise is g a b flat f that would be with respect to b flat the 6 the 7 the 1 but played higher the 5th and then again 6 7 1 higher 3 So if you map that out with respect to the G scale its sixth would be E so and then you would need to play the fourth in the left hand or E is lower third after writing down this whole chart system again so after writing all this down it will end up being E with C in the left F sharp with D G with E, B with G. So, some stacking. much whatever we did in the uh, on b flat scale you're doing on this new scale okay so i hope this this whole environment works well for you to get used to scales get used to transposing get used to hand coordination and play music which is quite quite pleasant sounding i think you you'll find this progression used a lot in the modern pop hit songs and i want to leave you with one final trick to build melodies in your right hand just using a stack or a cluster of notes and then we'll pack up the lesson so we do sets of 3 so let's first go back to the original scale uh, and play our usual work g a b flat f g a b flat d now this g find 3 notes from g above it so that's g a b flat so that becomes a set of 3 so an e flat you can stack it up with its fifth then a what is a is upper two more notes sets of 3 so and build a melody or just do next F with A originally, but now F is stacked with C, and A we are just adding those sets of three notes there. So now A, next one, climbing, then so G will have a pack of three, A will have a pack of three, A B flat C. B flat will have B flat C D and then F 
to you and then and when you end it there with b flat you end with d e flat f so you can play a melody like maybe this one with just with these three notes in a pattern or or encourage you to try and make your own create your own just using these three notes make a melody and make sure the left hand is not uh, at all compromised you should be playing the same old left hand what you used to play throughout this lesson right guys i hope you'll be able to digest all this information again the main intention here whether you are a beginner or any level on the piano is just to put all the tasks or all the skills needed to play the instruments in one lesson so i hope i have done justice to that and hopefully you enjoy the music as well which is being played otherwise a lot of the piano exercises out there don't seem to sound good so that's one of the main reasons why as musicians we just tend to stop the practice routine so have fun with the exercise and to supplement your learning there are always the notes on patreon and if you like the lesson do give the video a thumbs up leave us a comment with what you thought and Uh, leave us a comment also with something you would like to learn in the future and if you haven't already do consider hitting the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications thanks a ton this is jason